Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good week. I just thought I'd pop in again and have another little crafty play with you. A little catch up. And I thought we'd do a DL card or a slimline card. Um, it's called DL because it's a, a double length card. So obviously this length is double the base. Um, I always think they're very classy, these uh, slimline cards. And I thought we'd do a little bit of masking and use a couple of our, our new stamps. Um, if you haven't seen the new stamps, they're all on the Lavinia website. Um, beautiful, beautifully drawn by, um, by our Tracy. So um, let's begin. Now for this, I'm going to use a piece of card. This is Multifairies card and it's actually three and a half inches by seven and three quarter. And that size just fits nicely on the DL card blank. And as always, I'm going to start by adding my black Sharpie line around the outside. Now, again, as you know, this is something I've been doing for a long time, just saves on matting and layering. But me being me, and I always say this, I do mine at the beginning, just in case at the end um, I get a bit carried away and don't press down hard enough. And it has happened to me and the pen just whizzes right across my design. It's a bit like getting that dirty finger mark. And to be honest, I think it's happened to most of us. And I find if I'm rushing, if I'm not concentrating, and that's why you need to press down hard here. So I like to do that at the beginning, so I know it's done now. But again, that's just me. You will find your own way for doing these things. Let's turn that over. So what we're going to do now is create our circle. And for that, we're going to use one of our acetate circle masks that use the, the outside part. And also, I want to create my border at the base. And I'm going to use some low-tack tape. So this is actually sweet poppy um, low tack tape and for me I always write on the inside of mine just in case I don't want it to get mixed up with one that isn't low tack because again how many times have you done that and you make a lovely design and it rips your card or again is that just me now I'm going to line this up on my mat because I've got brilliant grid here so I know let's have a look if I put that there And where should we have that? I think I'll have it a bit higher on this one. So I'll have that there. And I want it about, about an inch or so there. And then this, again, I can line this up on my grid so I know it's straight. And if you're worried about going on the edge of your mask, you can put another bit of tape there and another piece of tape there and then what we'll do is we're going to start by adding some colour now I must admit this design I'm doing um, as a tall card but if you look obviously I'm going to add some colour first you could actually when it comes to the stamping put your design this way you could add a piece of ribbon here I mean, again, lots and lots of possibilities with this. So I've got a couple of colours of ink pad and I'm going to come in with the elements. You know, I like to keep showing you how we can use these elements. I always think if you're going to buy products, you need to know how to use them and not just as a one trick pony. We want to use these products again and again. So we're going to use the confetti and the russet orange. So I'll start with the confetti and I've got my, my stencil brush. I'm just going to give it a bit of a wipe on my inky binky. Right now, I want the colour quite pale. I'm just going to take a little bit off on my mat. I could take it off on my lid, but there's quite a lot of colour on my lid as it is. And I want this quite pale to start off with. So again, I'm going to come in on my mask and just flick a little bit of colour and again, slowly, slowly, gently build this up 
and I'm just going to do circular motions and come in a little bit further. Now these ink pads are very, very juicy. So we'll just add a little bit of colour around there. And then the same here, just going to flick, almost a flick and a blend. I want to go down the edge and then come in from this side and up that side. And what I'm almost doing is in it, giving a base coat with this colour. Again, I love to blend these colours. So, now a lot of people ask if I have lots of different stencil brushes. I will have some more when we get them back in stock. Um, but at the minute I'm using the same um, stencil brush for my russet, for my orange colour. So again, I'm just going to take a little bit off on my mat. And like everybody else, I just ordered them a couple at a time. Right, now this time I'm going to come in, but I want to blend the pink and the orange together. So do remember, you can blend the colours. You know, you don't have to just have one colour. And I'm slowly going round, but then I'm actually going to come in a little bit further with my orange, especially at the top. Now you can always use your acetate. I want to put the frog on here. Now I could you, you can use your acetate just to give you an idea of where to stamp him. And we'll add some orange on the bottom here. Now if I want to pick a little bit more up, I can pick it up off my mat. And again, I'm just sort of coming around the edge and just slowly building that colour up so I can stamp my sentiment on there. Again, just to almost frame it. I think I may just add a little bit more blending in here just so it's nice and pale sort of give a, a fuzzy nice edge yeah I'm happy with that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some stencil work and for this I'm going to bring in the leaf trail and I just love this stencil and it works so well for this design and I'm going to come in with the violet chalk this time and again take a little bit of colour off on my mat I'm just going to start round the edge and again just blend a little bit of colour and if I want to see how it's doing, look at that, just lift up. It's amazing, you don't need a lot of colour. And you will be able to see the design. And I just want this more of a hint in the background, just to add a little bit of interest. Now, I want it again, pick the colour up off my mat. I don't need to pick it up from my ink pad. I can put the lid on my ink pad. And I'm just going to flick in this top corner and this bottom corner. Let's have a look. Oh, that's very pretty. A little bit more in those corners and lift that up. And you can see we've got that lovely design. And I'm just gonna, with a wet cloth, wipe that up. Now I can, I could spritz it, I could make a background, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to wipe it up. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this off, but two things. My tape is low tack, definitely, but if you were worried it wasn't, you could use your heat tool. So what your heat tool will do is two things. One, it will help this ink dry, but two, it takes a lot of the tackiness off the tape. Now, as I say, mine is very low tack anyway. But if you were worried it wasn't, or if you suddenly started to peel it off and it wasn't low tack, don't worry. Put your heat tool on it and it will just lift off, just like that. And then, as I say, you've got this lovely design ready for stamping. I say you could put it that way. Now, again, if you're somebody who recently we've had a lot of people saying that Mr Mojo's gone on holiday and you need a little bit of inspiration, you know, you could do worse than make yourself some of these backgrounds up and then maybe alter the colours, alter the stencil used and then 
when you're feeling more sort of like yourself or maybe a bit more um, inspiration, then you could just stamp. You could do all sorts of things in here, couldn't you? We've got the most gorgeous stamps that would work with these. But I'm actually going to come in with the small frog. I say I'm going to come in with the small frog. I think he's, he's drawn a runner. Oh no, there he is. That's the trouble with frogs. They do tend to hop off if you're not careful. Now this frog is absolutely glorious and he has the wings already. We do have separate wings, the molted wings, but he has wings on him already. Look at him. Now I just think he is going to look lovely just in there. Now again, because I've already added some ink onto the card, even though I'm using my VersaFine clay, my permanent ink pad, just give that ink, especially on the silhouette part of the frog, give the ink time to soak in. I know we say this a lot, but it is important to do that. Right, let's lift him up. Oh, beautiful, isn't he? I mean, I have to say, I have a thing about frogs. Where we used to live, we had a pond in the garden and we had frogs. I do love them. Now, this area here, if you wanted, I'm going to stamp a sentiment, but you could stamp. There are lots of little, especially our, our, our pound stamps, that you could actually stamp and make a border. But I'm going to put birthday wishes because I actually want this, obviously, to be a birthday card. So where I've left this light area here, look, is just perfect for the birthday wishes. And then you've almost got that highlight around it. Now, on a separate piece of card, look, I've stamped. I love it. We have a, a button, a mini button stamp. And this is just adorable and so useful. So what I'm going to do is just add some colour to that. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of ink from my lid and just add, oh, not enough there, I'll just put a little bit on my mat. And I'm just going to watercolour. I love these buttons. And again, on my little scraps of card, I don't know about you, but I save them. And I've actually stamped myself quite a few buttons. And again, if Mr Mojo's gone and you're looking for something to do, just stamp yourself some buttons. Because if you look on the finished design, we've got the button here. And it just adds a lovely little embellishment. And you're just going to make yourself some embellishments. So again, I'll just watercolour paint them. And then we can put them to one side and they can be drying. Again, we'll just wipe that up. I mean, this is just such a, a quick card to do. It's so lovely. Now, what we want to do is we want to add some colour. So, first of all, I'm just going to add a little bit of shade underneath our frog, just to ground him. And almost that sort of shape, so his bottom comes round there. And I'm using my chalk pastel pencils for this. And as always, I'm just smudging them. Smudging, if you remember, does two things. It helps um, fix the, ch the pastel, because after all, it is a pastel. But also, for me, it just makes it look nicer. So I use the white. Now, again, you could use your white gel pen. But I, just for me, find my pastel pencils more forgiving. And as always, just give that a little bit of a smudge. And again, it's worth taking your time just for a little bit of highlight on him. Now, what I want to do with these wings is add a little bit of colour to his wings. And I'm going to use my Signo, my gel pens for this. And I've gone for colours that I think will go with the whole design. And what I thought is I would colour his wings plus he's got these gorgeous little... I mean, I don't know, I say frog, is he a toad? I don't know, he looks a bit bobbly doesn't he but whatever he is is beautiful and I'm just going to randomly and again you would spend longer than me now you've got so many different things that you could colour him with 
add a little bit of purple. I mean, again, you could add your glitter. I just find these gel pens with them almost having the glitter in already. So what colour haven't we got? Well, let's go for this bronze. This is nice. It just keeps it with the tone on tone. As I say, you will spend a lot longer. Just round the edge here will bring the gold. Right, have we missed any on his body? I think we've got him. Oh, he looks lovely with those wings, doesn't he? Now with my white gel pen, just want to come in and highlight round his eye and on his mouth there and just on his knee there. And what I do want to do is just make this look a little bit more 3D. So again, coming back in with my chalk pastel pencils and just in this bottom corner, I want to add a little bit of shadow. And again, this is something I do quite a lot just because something I just like to do. You could leave it like it is if you want. So again, I'm just using the black first and then I'm coming in with the white. And then I'll just use my finger. And I just want a little, little bit darker there. And if you get a little bit, sorry, I'm just going to reach right across you. If I got a little bit too much, just use your eraser and just, if you get too much, just rub it. And then in this top corner, we're just going to add a little bit of white. And again, just to make it look like it's 3D. Now, I've got to be honest, I'm not happy with this here. So I'm going to come in. Trouble is, I don't like to put my head right over the top. That's the problem. I don't want you to see the, the top of my head. So I just want to neaten this a little bit. I can't have it if I'm not happy with it. There we go, that's better. I'm happy with that. Sorry about that. If I'm not happy, it's just, it would annoy me. And on top of that there, we'll just have a few little dots of the gel around there. And then on our banner here, now again, you can leave your banner like this. You can add a black fine line, or I'm just going to add the black pastel pencil along the bottom, again, just to make a little bit of a shadow. And I'm adding more in this corner because this corner is just going to add more shadow. And then a little bit of the white this side. Now, again, if you're not happy using your finger, you can use um, a biodegradable cotton bud or you can buy nibs, blending nibs. There we go. And then just to make it look like his wings are, are moving, we're just going to add a couple of lines there so it looks like he's, he's flapping his wings. Now, again, you can leave it like that if you want. And I like this white space, but I actually think it's almost too white. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of my ink. And again, you've seen me do this before. And just my fan brush is in my water pot. So I've just come in and just add, I don't want to overdo it, but just a few little splatters. And you know I like sort of diagonal lines. And just going across there. And that's all I need. Wipe that up. And again, you're starting to build up the design. And then just the finishing little touch of that button on here. So what I would do for the button is before I cut it out, I just get my um, chalk pastel pencil. Now this one isn't quite dry, but if you add a little bit, just gives you extra detail. And then in the opposite corner, put your white highlight, opposite corner. Does a circle have corners? 
you know what I mean, the opposite bit. <laughs> Question myself then. And then all I would do is cut the button out and then this is the good bit. Get yourself a needle and thread and actually thread the button. Can you see? And to me, that just adds. So I've threaded this and I'm just going to finish off at the back and we'll cut that. And to me, it just adds such a lovely little detail. And for me, it's all these these pound stamps are just so fabulous. So what I'm going to do is add that to my card. It's just a nice little embellishment. And what I've got is I've got some little stamens here. And these are just out of my stash. And I just thought they would complement the design. But again, you don't have to add these. You could just add the button. I mean, another thing I did think, you could stamp extra wings. Now look, we could add an extra wing to the frog or an extra wing under the, under the button. Lots and lots of possibilities with this. Those moulded wings are just so useful. So I'm just going to use my 3D glue gel. Now it might be you want to stamp a design here and actually put your sentiment coming from underneath your button. So one thing to remember is we want it with the shaded area down here at the bottom. And then just let's get ourselves a couple of these lovely stamen. And we'll put some coming from this side. And again, that will just catch in that 3D glue gel. And then we'll have a couple. That one's a bit long, so we'll chop that off a bit. And again, just the opposite corners thing. Just gives it just a nice little touch. Pop those over there and again just put my glue away and then just for that final finishing touch with the white gel pen again you can just come on the top here and add a couple of dots again just where you've got your shadow it's nice to have a bit of highlight and maybe just on the top of the lettering for the word birthday and wishes add a little bit of white And there we go. You've got a lovely birthday design and how quick was that? And as I say, perfectly flat, but you've got that lovely impression of 3D. And if I bring in the original, and you can have so much fun with this. And we've got such lovely stamps. I mean, what's about stamping the fish? We've got fish, frogs. Now, the other thing is uh, um, swimming what's he called boggart he would look fabulous in there too almost look like he's in a bubble now that would look lovely again you could do it sideways that's the thing i do find once i start doing these videos and i think of an idea i come up with so many other ideas and i think that's the thing if your mojo has disappeared just maybe follow along with one of the videos even if it's not something that you particularly have got a passion for but follow along with the design and while you're doing it chances are your head you'll be thinking oh actually I've got a different stamp I could use or I could use a different colour or this I could use a different stencil and believe you me while you're thinking that your mojo will start coming back and before you know it honestly you'll have spent an hour you'll have gone off on a tangent you'll have created a total different design I mean look at this we've got the banner here lower and the banner here I've brought a little bit higher. Again, just to show you the difference. I mean, this would look lovely on a six by six card blank using the larger. I mean, we've got the larger circle mask look. And again, that would give you larger stamps to put in the middle. I mean, I'm thinking one of the, um, the Fantasia, the beautiful bolts would look lovely in that. So you could do the same sort of thing, but on a six by six card. 
Honestly, you see what I mean? Mr Mojo comes back and then all of a sudden he floods you with ideas. What is it they say? You don't see any buses, then you see three at once. That's the same with Mr Mojo. Once you get him back, he, honestly, the ideas will just keep coming. So I hope you've enjoyed that. As I say, quite quick today, but that's lovely. Again, if you need to batch card make, make yourself some of these backgrounds and then stamp them up later. So, oh, the other thing with the button as well, while well, I remember, um, clear embossing powder or some glossy accents if you want a shiny button. Honestly, looks wonderful. So you take care, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. And thanks for all your messages. And um, remember to hit the subscribe button. Honestly, I love all the support we get on here. Such a wonderful, crafty family. You take care. I'll pop back soon. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.